So now, what do you do? How do you dig yourself out of this hole you got yourself in? So if you can see, use the same resolve that your people obviously are capable of to resurrect your own business life. And in some respects, you won't be just resurrecting your own business life, you'll be resurrecting your life, your personal life. Because I assure you, if you're five or ten times more successful, you're going to feel better about yourself, you're going to be a better husband, a better father, a better lover, you're going to be a better everything. Because you'll feel good about yourself because you will have accomplished more than you're doing now. And you're going to be much closer to being all that you can be instead of just part of what you can be. In that regard, bro Crump, God love her, I hope you're listening to this. When I first met her, she weighed 335 pounds. She's one of my success stories. She's Canadian. And she lost a couple hundred pounds. And, and she credits, you know, this methodology or this laser being focused or whatever you want to call it to that. I've had a lot of other people that have come back from near fatal accidents and, you know, muscular dystrophy and all kinds of stuff. It just goes to show the power of the mind or the body. Um, and, and we're not trying to be holistic, too holistic here. Um, but it's the same, that same resolve, you put it in your action plan for your business, you'll get tremendous results. 70, almost 70% of the people that have lung cancer that smoke, smoke again. Why is that? You got cancer from cigarette. Well, some people say they didn't get a cancer from cigarette. And you smoke again. Bad habits, yeah. Bad habits, and the habits will kick you, okay? And if I had lung cancer, I can assure you, one thing that I would be not doing is smoking cigarettes again. <laughs> it seems intuitive. I mean, I don't understand. Yet, we do the same doofus things in our life and in our business. Some people have, you know, some men and women have trouble with their love life. The, the women um, associate with guys that beat them and, you know, treat them poorly. And men do too. Uh, you don't normally hear about it, uh, women beating men, but like I told you about the German guy that came here, we, we, we have, we, uh, it does happen. Funny it's Germany though, but yeah. Uh, 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 and it's habits. And it's, it's basically low self-esteem. I and mean, women keep, keep, continue to subject themselves to those kind of things. They have low self-esteem and they, they feel that they more or less don't deserve any better. Okay. Well, the same is for you. You don't feel down deep inside you deserve any better. And it's a self-esteem issue. High self-esteem people are more successful by definition than low self-esteem people. Because they do things that enhance their self-esteem, enhance their self-worth, enhance their confidence. They don't engage, and we're going to talk about this tomorrow, self-sabotaging activities. We engage in self-sabotaging activities because, you know, I've reached this pinnacle or this level of success, but I don't really feel comfortable here, back at comfort zone. I don't feel comfortable here, so I'm going to do something real fucking stupid to make sure I get knocked off. And I see it, I see it all the time. And Bruce Whipple, God love him, he and I have been together now 17 years doing deals. And I get a, an email, uh, it's abbreviated now, it used to be longer emails. It never ceases to amaze me, Dan, how much people engage in self-sabotaging activities when they're not comfortable with success. I mean, Bruce, you know, I say, Bruce, we ought to write a book about this, you know. Um, and just at the other end of the continuum, the antithesis view, is all these uh, silk-suited gurus say it's easy. That's just, you know, such a load of crap. It's not easy. And uh, it's like the 40-hour work uh, month, or what, uh, 40... Four-hour four, four work week. Four-hour work week. But that guy's a fucking fraud. I don't know if anybody knows anything about him, but he's a fucking fraud. He know? made He made... At an average of forty thousand dollars a month at, on annualized for one month, and he expanded it to a year. 
He never made any money. The only money he made is the book. But the Romanian, your your uh, twin brother and uh, John Carlo fell in love with that fucking book, and they had just gotten that book when I met him. And then I, when I'm working like a dog, like 90 hours a week, and I said, "How did this guy do it on four hours a week? I don't understand." I said, "Because he's full of shit. That's why." It's, impo it's not possible. But people would rather hear a oh, four-hour work week. I mean, anybody, even a lazy, stuck-in-the-mud, inside-the-box German can handle four hours a week. Any, you know, anybody can do four hours a week. You can stand, literally, I'm sure there are people who can stand on their head four hours a week. <laughs> and maybe it's a German that stands on his head four hours a week. So do you think is low self-esteem correlated with bad habits? I mean, say that again. Uh, do you think uh, low self-esteem is the most uh, is um, directly aff um, affected by bad habits? I think. No, no. I think that bad habits are affected by low self-esteem. I mean, you have bad habits because you have low self-esteem. You don't have low self-esteem because you got bad habits. But I don't. I think it's still a habit. Like for example, for me, I don't have low self-esteem. I have very high self-esteem. But I still have some bad habits that I... Yeah, well, I mean, you can have bad habits and have self, uh, high self-esteem. That's not the issue. A lot of people have bad habits, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not pointing a finger of judgment. A lot of high self-esteem guys I know use hookers. They don't want to go, and I don't blame them. They don't want to go through the fucking hassle. Buy flowers, dinner, oh, who fuck that? I mean, forget all that shit. Why do you want to do that? When you just want to get your nuts off. I mean, shit. And then get rid of them, get the fuck out of here. I mean, so that's a bad, that's not a good habit, but I understand it because, you know, I believe you, I understand it. And, and, and the, uh, but I mean, they still have high self esteem. They don't, they may not feel good about themselves for using a hooker. I'm not, I, uh, I mean, I'm sure people that use hookers don't feel good about themselves. Now, some people are, are narcissistic, so they, you know, does everybody know what that narcissistic means? Oh, well, if you know it, then I mean everybody knows it. Okay, good. Yeah. He's our benchmark. He's, uh, if he knows it. I mean, the, uh, and, you know, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and some people are um, amoral without morals. Um, but I mean, for the, you know, for the, uh, the norm. And I, a lot of good people sway, you know, stumble and they go do something that they're ashamed of. Um, that, but that, they can still have high self-esteem. I mean, nobody's perfect, you know. Uh, everybody held Tiger Woods in such awe, in, you know, in, like he was, you know, like a, a black god on earth came to, you know, and he saved golf. There's no question about that. Okay, but I mean, he's he certainly got had some questionable habits, and. Uh, and now everybody, in, you know, everybody in the dog uh, that, that does the same. They thank God, such a high-profile guy is on the front page of the newspapers. <laughs> Otherwise, it could be me. <laughs> and so, but I mean, I know that this e uh, episode has sh shaken the s esteem or self-esteem of, of, of Tiger, because Tiger Woods, a lot of his self-esteem was uh, associated with his uh, his adoring fans. And he's got less adoring fans than he did before. And if, if he continues to win, he, there's always going to be an asterisk by his name now, forever. There's always going to be an asterisk that, you know, uh, it's like the guys that took steroids that broke uh, the home run records. There's a little asterisk by their name. You know, he did 76 home runs, but, you know. <laughs> and so there's always going to be an asterisk by his name. And Jack Nicholas said 10 years ago, he is so gifted, he has so much talent, he will break my record if he stays healthy and emotionally um, the, uh, he doesn't uh, make any uh, big mistakes. And, you know, lo and behold, he, he stayed healthy, <laughs> but he made some emotional mistakes. Now, the converse of that, and this, the, the people are thinking, just imagine if he was always out whoring around, drinking and fucking around, just imagine how good an athlete he really is. Just imagine how gifted and talented he is to be able to do that, doing that, all that shit, 
and living five or ten or twelve lives. I mean, he must be out of this world. Hey, but nobody's perfect, you know. And you know, I'm, I'm not a really deeply religious guy, but you know, if you if you believe in God and you're a Christian, the last perfect guy or near perfect, they hung on a fucking cross. So, and certainly nobody that's ever come through this room is perfect, or even near perfect, and myself included. I've got a lot of bad habits. We'll call them bad habits from now on. No, <laughs> we'll call them bad. I got a lot. I got, I got a lot of bad habits. I got I got partners that are bad habits. I mean, Sa Sally says Sally in this regard says that you're so, you're too patient with some. Um, you're not patient enough with some, but you're too patient with others. And that's true. And you know because I assimilate and I, and I assimilate you know you know their backgrounds and you know where they came from. And I shouldn't do that, you know. I, I shouldn't do that. But some people, like, this, I do give dispensation from time to time. But normally it has to be like Mother Teresa. But I do give dispensation. I, you know, you know, I'll, you know I'll, I'll allow this person a little more time because of whatever. Um, and um, I don't allow my kids that. And my kids say, Dad, if anybody needs dispensation, it's us. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, my sons told me, I mean, it, really, it, it hurt me. This was 10 years ago. Uh, in fact, it was the trip that I broke my collarbone and I almost killed myself. And we're sitting at the bar and I, I allowed the kids to drink. And they, and they had a few drinks and they said, you know, Dad, how hard it is to be your son? They got tears in their eyes. Up. Do you have any idea how goddamn hard it is to be your son? Nothing's ever good enough. No matter what, you get 100. Why don't you get 105? If you do this, you do that. If we're star athletes, you know, why can't you be, you know, all American? Nothing's ever good enough. And which is true. Nothing was ever good enough for them. I drove them out of athletics. Derek was a gifted athlete. You know, even if I became, you know, all American superhero, it wouldn't be good enough. So I just gave up athletics. Have you ever said to them, well done, or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But that, I mean, they got to do something really well done to get a well done out of me. <laughs> Not this half-ass, you're special, I'm okay, you're okay bullshit. No, no. Straight A's, I used to say, good job. You know? Uh, getting, going through university, graduate school on the full scholarship there, good job. No, good job. But I mean, it's got to be something extraordinary. And when we talk about praise and leadership... You want to give all the warranted praise humanly possible. Warranted. You can't fabricate praise. And that's what a lot of bullshit managers and bullshit leaders, they tell you how good everything is and how good you're doing. And down deep inside, you know that they know that you know that you're not doing good. <laughs> that is detrimental to growth. Because, you we, you know, we, we can't bullshit ourselves. Many people can. Oh, well, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, they can, they can. But, you, 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 you know, in an organization, if I'm telling you that how, how good you are, yeah. uh, and everybody else knows that you're not, yeah. you may believe it. Okay. <laughs> but the rest of the organization knows it's not true. Yeah. You're right, people can delude themselves. You're absolutely correct. People can delude themselves and they can, they can uh, fool themselves. But you can't fool a whole organization. You can't. And, um, and normally the shit comes out at the Christmas parties. That's why I'm the last one there and the first one gone. I don't want to know. I don't want to hear. I've never heard anything good come of the Christmas party. <laughs> Nothing. And I don't like Christmas parties that don't like, you can't bring your wives. I don't like those. You bring your goddamn wife because you're likely to be more in line with the <laughs> social behavior <laughs> with your wife there. He's pulling you around by the ear like this. <laughs> but I mean, and um, yeah, I've got it. And, and, and it's all the same whether you're in Asia, South American Christmas parties, they're all the same. They all uh, uh, generate, or degenerate, I should say, into just, you know, awful, awful experiences. What do you say about work hard, play hard? I mean, Donald Trump said it. Work I say hard, work hard, play hard. In other words, the time that you're not working, which should be most of the time, do something not just, you know, I mean, 
you know, uh, jump out of planes, you know, you're gonna drink, drink hard. Uh, I'm not saying you should because I know it's bad for your health and all that other shit. You know, but, but you know, two or three times a month, drinking the excess doesn't kill you. Drinking the excess five, six times a week kills you. You know, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go, uh, I used to say, okay, well, let's go away for three or four days. You know, and then of course I go away for three or four days, and then I have a meeting in New York, and I, you know, <laughs> but you know, I, 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 I do things. That, one of the things that I try to do now, which is difficult for me because of my commitments, is t being more spontaneous. And most and Germans have trouble being spontaneous. You know, you don't just on a Thursday afternoon say, fine, we're going to go away for five days on tomorrow morning. Pack your bag, honey. You know, don't bring your diaphragm. <laughs> you know, we're going to start a family this weekend. <laughs> Enough anal sex, we're going to do it for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember we were, uh, Sally and I were in India, uh, and a couple of, uh, in their 40s, I'd say middle of the 40s, and they were English, and we had rented this thing to go, uh, I don't know, uh, we went out to look at elephants or tigers, I forget what we were doing, and, by, and I was helping the woman up into the carriage, and by accident, my hand touched her butt and her ass to get her up into the carriage. And then she turned around and she sat down and said anything. She just smiled. I, I maybe she thought I did it on purpose. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But then she and, and then I said, excuse me, and, and you know, because I obviously I didn't want the wrong impression. And I said, excuse me, I didn't, I didn't mean to touch you there. And she says, and she looks at her husband, it's the first time anybody touched me in the ass this last two weeks. <laughs> and the husband, just oblivious, mm -hmm, taking pictures of the fucking flowers, <laughs> like a fucking British doof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most women are starved for affection. Not necessarily sex, but affection. More than men. Men uh, can be starved of sex, but <laughs> they're not necessarily too much into huggy. If huggy kissy leads to sex, that's okay. But we want the minimum of that, and the sex is okay. But I mean, uh, most women are starved for uh, human touch. Human touch, uh, mm -hmm. affection, and that's why it's so very difficult when they have the empty nest syndrome when kids grow up and leave the home because the mom, mom's always hugging even when you were older you don't want to be hugged you know, hugging the boys and the daughters don't mind being hugged but sons as they grow don't like being hugged <coughs> and because of human touch and then the kids leave and there's no human touch the husband's on the golf course he's doing business he's at his mistress. You know, he's getting a massage with a hooker. I mean, he's, he's not there. So there's nobody to touch. That's why, you know, it, the, uh, women start sleeping with the gardener and all kinds of people. And all, you know, it's just, it's just human touch. Whereas, you know, so not necessarily sex. And the question was, does it matter if um, uh, somebody gets a degree or doesn't get a degree? Um, and I asked it. Does it, does it seem to matter? Does anybody ask? And the answer was no. Uh, the, uh, but the German society as a whole is pretty qualifications orientated. Mm -hmm. They like letters after your name and numbers and shit. <laughs> uh, and um, they like to be here, professor, doctor. <laughs> and they just, you know, and um, Britain's the same way that. In there's certain countries, in America, nobody gives a shit. But it used to be when I was a young man, it was a chip on my shoulder because I never went and got an MBA. Because I'm only a few minutes short of my master's in finance. But I, I, I thought it was a waste of time. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> which was interesting because to, to get my son to go get his MBA, uh, especially since I'm only four units short of my master's in finance, the, uh, but I just said, you know, it's, uh, I think it's better that you get an MBA. So he got one. Um, whether he could be successful without one, I'm sure he could. But the, uh, it, it, it depends. But I, if they're not asking you anything about your degree, um, then I wouldn't worry about it. And in China? In China, they like a lot of letters after their name. Okay. They like a lot of letters. And they like if you're educated in the West. <clears throat> Uh, primary education in the 
in China, but your uh, and, and your uh, advanced education in the West. They're like Canada, U.S., England. And I've heard so many times, oh, I, I did my MBA in England, or I did my MBA in Canada. Uh, and uh, they, they, they do that for two reasons. Number one, the educational system is better at, at the higher level, except for engineering. Pretty, China produces pretty good engineers. But um, for um, finance, the, the, the master's programs aren't as good as they are in the West. Of course, the master's programs in China are very new. I mean, they haven't been around very long. You know, 10, 20 years? 20 years, not 10 years, 20 years. So normally I, I avoid my, uh, mentioning my uh, degree uh, because it's uh, I'm a physician also, and it's nothing got to do with what I'm doing. And so the people might think, oh, how a, a medical doctor? No, medical. Uh, uh, I, I've done physics. Oh, a PhD? Not PhD. Uh, uh, I just was studying physics. Diplom Physica Universität. What does that mean? Like like his colleague sitting next to him. Yeah. Physicist. Uh, a physicist. A physicist. So that's why you can relate to him being goofy. <laughs> because you're just older. He's a younger goofy than you. you know? No, he's not much younger. He's only six years younger than you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so there's a bachelor's degree. That's not what you have. Well, I have a normal uh, uh, university diploma. Okay, so you don't call it a bachelor's, a master's, or a... It's, it's a I think it's a master, uh, kind of master degree. Yeah. So meanwhile, it's, it's like, uh, since Bologna... It's uh, all the same, but especially in Germany as well. But diploma was <coughs> most you had to do much more work for for diploma. They really would like uh, at my place was you have to go one one year to the laboratory and then. So okay, when you get out of high school, you get out of high school when you're 18. <coughs> no, or after after. Uh, yeah, you take it. The equivalent to A level. A level. Now it's always at 18 or 19. Yeah, and then, then you go to university. And then you, you graduate in university, but it takes a long time. So, for example, law, you, you study for at least uh, four years, possibly five years on average, before you take the first exam. And then you do the two years with the state. Um, so, I don't know how long so it takes. So, for so a so it's five years you study at university. Okay, to get a diploma, yeah. to be a physicist. Yeah. Well, I, the question is just. So when you when you when you when you write your when when, when you put your resume, yeah. when somebody looks for your re send me your resume. Yeah. What do you put down? Uh, Under education, what do you put down? Of course, I mentioned it. I, yeah. have to, I have to mention it. Yeah. Okay. But if I if I have to uh, tell who I am and what I'm doing, and I say what I do, but I don't mention that I'm a physicist. Good. And if you get somebody's resume, how much do you want to get? Because I think I sent you one page, and I think you truly. Maybe you've got time to look at one page, but you don't want. Yeah, to have I mean, more I than don't. That. You know, the, yeah, I just, I, 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 don't want, I don't want a big long thing. I just want to know where he was born, where he went to school, did he finish school, where he worked, bullet points. <coughs> that's it. And you know, uh, two or three references, if you know, if I want to call him, that's it. Uh, if I want it more in detail, if I want to actually, if you perchance work for someplace like I know. Like Siemens or um, uh, General Motors or Toyota USA, where I know somebody, where I know a lot of people, or IBM, where I, ha I know the former head of uh, human resources, then I ask you some specific questions, and did, not just to see if you're going to lie to me, but I I can verify the answer with somebody that I know, you know, and um, which I have in the past, and uh, a, a big thing now, and I I don't know why it's more prevalent. I guess it's because of the competition. A lot of people lie about on their resumes now. A lot of them. And they may say it's a little lie. It's like when you see from 1993 to 1994, he was ABC. 1994 to 1997, he was XYD. Really, he wasn't. He was there. There were, there's 10 months in between, but because they're only talking about years, <laughs> it shows that there's a 10 month, you know, a 10 month gap. Okay, so um, the, uh, I'm, you know, uh, we're. Uh, where were you those 10 months? And so, so I've had people say as stupidly as, oh, I, I, I just went, I spaced out, I went down to Colombia, uh, <laughs> Costa Rica to smoke dope and surf. 
That's a bad answer. <laughs> I mean, better than being in prison, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 